to see them at this point. There you go. Cool. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I will make an effort to start this off. Uh, my name is Joel Jackman. I am one of the owners of a company called Paragon IT Professionals based in Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, I'm excited to be joining you. This is not my expertise. My friend Adam is an expert at presenting, so I'm going to do my best without tripping over myself. Uh, and I like to introduce myself, uh, my friend is Adam Carroll as my, my skinny doppelganger, if you can see it all. <laughs> so, uh, I'm excited about joining you today. And, um, you may be asking yourself, why is an owner of a 23 year old IT staffing and solutions firm qualified, let alone speaking to us about leadership? Uh, I'll try to explain. Um, not only do I have an addiction, uh, a lifetime addiction uh, to learning and specifically personal development, leadership. Um, when my brother and I started our company in 1997, as you can imagine, you know, business does not always go as planned. So my brother and I, Craig, uh, we spent thousands of hours in, in investing in ourselves, um, studying business, uh, talking to business coaches, um, one of the business coaching opportunities that I had been involved with, I was in for three years. It was called an, uh, CEO forums. Basically, I sat on a monthly basis for three years with business owners that owned different businesses, and we worked worked out challenges uh, that we were both that we were all experiencing in our businesses. It was honestly the best learning experience I had ever had. Uh, and so, what we did is, um, in 2009, we decided to explore uh, that learning format and the opportunity to deliver it to our industry. So things were a little slow. We knew we needed to be in front of our customers the best we could. Uh, and in 2010, what we started was a thing called Paragon's IT Leadership Forum. The mission of the forum is simply this, it's to improve the leadership cultures within the participating companies, one leader at a time. Um, the mission, excuse me, the, the leaders commit to a, a year long uh, monthly sessions with us. So they commit to an entire year uh, once a month, we get together for half a day where we expose leader to, leaders to forward thinking and healthy leadership skills, uh, where we have an opportunity to dissect challenges that we face as leaders, um, including our new sessions. So where, again, to uh, the qualification that we might have with our new sessions beginning in 2021, the math is this. We will have uh, hosted nearly 1,000 forum sessions. We have had a chance to bring together 500 senior IT leaders from nearly 110 uh, large organizations, mid to large organizations in Iowa, Minnesota, and now we're very excited. We're gonna present the forum in, in Nebraska. So uh, I believe hosting the forums over the last 11 years, working through leadership challenges and growing with the leaders that join us, uh, along with hanging out with great people like Adam, uh, qualifies us, at least reasonably qualifies us, to talk about leadership and join you in this breakout session. So uh, that might explain why I'm here. Now, Adam, how about you? Well, thank you, Joel. Uh, first of all, it's an honor to be here with everyone today. And, and Joel, I appreciate the invite to come in and chat with you about leadership and about the, uh, the leadership forum and what we're doing. I'm from a company called Renzo, and what we offer is the Renzo Experience. Um, like Joel, I have spent a lifetime studying personal development and high performance. Um, Renzo itself has been around for just about a year, although the partners, myself and another gentleman, have been doing this kind of work together and apart for about 20 plus years of our career. And uh, Renzo essentially was created to help organizations um, build cultures where people love to work. We find that employees who are more engaged at work are, are happier, uh, they're more fulfilled, and the bottom line is they're more profitable. And so what we love to do is go into organizations and help them build leadership cultures that help support people's purpose and their passion, uh, create clarity and alignment about where they're going, and ultimately um, allow leaders to create better rapport and engagement with their folks. So that's what we're gonna talk about a little bit today. The title of our talk is From Me, to we, how to become a leader that other people will follow. And um, we're gonna start out by talking a little bit about your personal leadership brand. 
we're going to transition a little bit to how clear is your team on where you're going and the reason that clarity and alignment is so important. And then last but not least, we're going to talk about um, intentionality, showing up every day, being prepared and helping your team be purposeful. So without further ado, Joel, I want to dive in. Um, I'm going to share a slide, uh, an image with y'all first. Some of you may be familiar with Michael Scott from The Office. When asked, would I rather be feared or loved? He said, easy, both. I want people to be afraid of how much they love me. <laughs> and uh, I love this quote from Michael Scott because he definitely has a personal leadership brand. Now, his brand of leadership is kind of the bumbling idiot, unfortunately. But the question that comes up is, how do you want to be remembered? And Joel, I, I want to throw this over to you because I know that in the past, we've done forum events uh, whether it's Des Moines or Minnesota, where you have interacted with individuals who very clearly had a leadership brand or changed their leadership brand throughout the forum. Correct. Yeah, it's, you know, coming from my uh, a sales world like I live in today, it's, it's natural, Adam, uh, for me to make sure we have a brand and we have a mission and communicate that effectively. For example, Paragon, right? The whole goal is to provide legendary service while we set the standard in IT staffing and solutions. But what I found though is technical people that are now leaders, which is typically where the IT leaders come from, uh, it's not the standard MO. There aren't, they aren't necessarily thinking about that in a deliberate fashion. Um, but those that have gone through the forum and have worked through our branding uh, modules, uh, the, they not only do they feel better about their job, there's greater confidence when they're delivering in their job. Um, often what happens is teams then define their departmental brands and what we call brand promises. So what that means for us is when your customer gets you, whether it's an internal customer or an external customer, what do they get when they get you? And when that's well-defined, um, we've had a lot of experience where uh, those teams just very well, they wanna find out uh, the organization want, wants to find out what are you doing? Why, why are you so uh, in sync with each other? And a lot of that comes down to some of the modules that we take them through in regard to branding. I love it. Um, you know, the, the power of this for those that, that maybe don't understand what we talk about when we talk about the brand promise, if your department or your, um, your organization decides that part of their brand promise is responsiveness, and you are going to really beat the drum of responsiveness. And when you respond, how will you respond? With amazing customer service, with gratitude, with um, you know, grace if, if your people are under pressure or someone else is under pressure. It's part of that brand promise. And the way to really understand what's being presented is to ask for feedback from other people. How are you experiencing my team? How are you experiencing me as a leader? And asking for feedback. And Joel, I know you had a particular experience with a farm, a leader at Farm Bureau who, who essentially created their own brand identity as a leader within the organization and going through the forum. Um, will you yeah, talk about that? it's a great story. I believe she was, uh, might have been in the inaugural forum in 2010. She wasn't, she was not new to the company. She was there for at least 20 years uh, providing technology leadership, had done it very well, steady Eddie. But after she joined the forum, and I'm not taking any credit for it, but uh, she walked away with uh, deliberately defining a little bit more how she wanted to be um, evaluated in the marketplace. And in doing so, not only did she gain confidence, uh, a couple of years later, a CIO friend of mine who was her former boss had asked what in the world happened. Uh, she just blossomed. She found a, 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 another gear in her business and ever since has continued to still grow and be rewarded for doing so well. So that's just one example that I've experienced told specifically from her former boss uh, of the success having gone through the forum. So it's an exciting story. I love it. I think part of the power of that as, as well is the fact that the forum creates this very safe place for people to share maybe some of their frustrations or their challenges in an environment of their peers where their peers are questioning them on certain, whether it be decisions or actions or things they're, they're undertaking, but it's a very safe place to grow and develop your own skills. Um, again, in a peer group. And we talk about this a lot at Renzo that there's power in a mastermind that 
in itself, if, if you are trying to develop and grow as a leader by yourself on your own, you can do it. There's no question. But the power of that is uh, exponentially multiplied when you're around a group of people who are also growing, also developing and challenging you at the same time uh, to get better, do better, be better, ultimately to define how do you want to be remembered and then start behaving in the way that requires you to behave in order to be remembered that way. Um, Joel, anything else to share about brand or how you guys have developed your brand? No, I mean, we're going to talk paradigm. about it in the next step, but it's, it's, it's all about taking the time and deliberately thinking about how do I want to be perceived in the market? And when you do it and do it well, and then the whole team is on board and really the whole team has an opportunity to um, make some of those decisions, you, you have a much higher level engaged and happy workforce. So, I love it. Well, you mentioned that uh, we were going to get to this and I want to talk about the second bullet point. The first obviously being how do you want to be remembered? Um, we encourage you to do two things. Number one is to question your own personal leadership brand. What is included in it? Is it things like responsiveness, kindness, generosity? Are you a great networker? Um, are you super compassionate with your team? Are you willing to tackle tough conversations head on? All of these are, are components of your personal leadership brand. And then secondly, what is your team or your department or your organization known for? So what is the brand identity, both internally and externally? And as a leader, can you begin to question that with your team or help steer and shape what that identity is in the marketplace, again, both internal and external? To do that, what it requires is a certain amount of clarity and quite a bit of alignment. Now at Renzo, we talk about this um, in specifics. Clarity and alignment are two of the, of the things that we really hammer companies on. And the reason we do that is oftentimes we'll go into an executive leadership team meeting and there'll be seven to 10 people sitting around the table. And one of the exercises that we put people through is we'll say, okay, so over the next year, what are the ideal things that the company needs to do or the, the organization as a whole, departmentally, your team, where do you want to go in the next 12 months? And we have them write it down. And then what we have them do is we have them share that on a big whiteboard, everyone puts their ideas up of where they're going in the next year. And in a room full of seven to 10 people, Joel, you can probably imagine where this is going. How many different answers do you think? Seven to 10. Seven to 10. Seven to 10. Because every single person has a different idea of what the, the clear goal, where they're headed with their particular position or department or organization, uh, where they're headed. So, I know for having worked with you and your brother and the entire Paragon team for a number of years, that some time ago, you and your brother got very, very clear about what Paragon does well, where Paragon is headed, and got everyone on the team aligned on those types of things. Walk people on the call here how you did that and why that's so important. Yes, thanks. Um, you know, as I mentioned, we've been doing business for 23 years, and it's not that we haven't navigated these waters of trying to be clear and define uh, where we're going, how we're going to get there. Uh, but about three years ago, we found, and I recommend anybody that's interested looking this up, a book called Traction. He was written by a business leader by the name of Gino Wickman. And what he has presented and provided my organization is a framework called EOS, Entrepreneurial Operating System. Uh, it is made specifically uh, based upon seven key criteria or seven elements to his program. Uh, it's all about defining clarity and not so much, not just uh, about where we're going, the vision, mission, the goals, the marketing plan, who is to define market, uh, but how we get there also. So it's been a massive opportunity for us to get smarter, uh, to think more clearly about where we're going. You know, I, Honestly, 10 years ago, if you would have asked my organization, what was our mission? What was our vision? What are our core values? We would have had a difficult time uh, having everybody match. And so uh, I'm very proud to say this new system that we are um, trying to stay very strict with uh, has been a, a great opportunity for us to define clarity at the leadership level, um, as well as transfer and uh, be very transparent with our teams and they know we, we, it's, there's a cadence, there's a tempo, we, uh, weekly meetings, 
monthly uh, re reviews of that. We have quarterly reviews. Um, and then we spend a great deal of time planning out not only 10 and three years, but one year goals. Uh, we break those down into quarterly basis because the idea is after about 90 days, the rope of organization gets a little frayed at the end. So every 90 days, you kind of get back together as a leadership team, redefine what the, the top three to seven most important things are that we need to accomplish to reach the goals that we're pursuing. We define those very, very well. We call them rocks. So all leaders have rocks. Uh, those rocks have to be uh, very, very smart as far as being specific and measurable and time bound and such. And then what we do is in EOS and, and the biggest change for us on a weekly basis, we sit down as a leadership team and evaluate the business as a whole on a scorecard. So we know uh, how is it functioning? How is it working? But then the rocks that we as leaders and including owners have, we evaluate where are you with that? Are you on track? Or are you off track? You have 90 days to accomplish that particular goal. And they're usually very large goals. Uh, where are you in that process? And so that level of clarity adds uh, a, a healthy level of um, accountability, even at the leadership level. And we share all that information with our teams. And I believe uh, the engagement that, that it provides has, um, or the transparency that it has provided uh, it generates uh, increased engagement. And at least people understand exactly where we're going, uh, how are we getting there, and how do we know when we're on or off track. So that's, that's a been a, a tremendous asset that we've injected. Um, one of the things that comes up, Adam, is my brother and I, who are the owners of the company, you know, as an entrepreneur, you do everything you have to do to get the business going. Well, one of the rules is uh, in the leadership level, no two people in one role. So we had a, it is, it's difficult when you're used to owning certain things or at least co-owning certain, certain responsibilities. We had to extract ourselves from that, uh, which adds even more clarity. We know who's responsible for what. Um, so with, with those growth opportunities, it, it could be challenging, but it's been a, a tremendous opportunity for us again to be aligned and be clear in our future. You talk about, Joel, that the idea there's a cadence to the meetings. And some people may listen to that and think, okay, you do a weekly check-in called a level 10 in some circles, level 10 meeting, you do an end of the month review, you do quarterly planning meetings, you do an annual meeting, which sometimes is two days or more offsite. For people that go, that's just a lot. It's a lot of like, it feels like you're just rehashing, uh, you know, the same old bullet points. What do you say to people who say, I don't have enough time to go through? Oh, that's interesting. Um, you know, what, what I've learned and, and taken away with, boy, we have so many meetings and, and the fear of that when we're very, very busy. Well, uh, and it's not, I'm not perfect at it. Our organization is not perfect at it, but I won't go to a meeting unless I understand what the purpose of that meeting is. I want to know what is the plan of that meeting. We start on time. We end on time. Um, we have takeaways. So who's responsible for next steps? What are the next steps? When are those next steps due? And so you feel like you're being successful in those meetings. And, and you know, sure, we might schedule them for an hour, but let's let's if it's at 45 and we're done, we, we don't have to chit chat unless we just want to enjoy our, each other's company. That's fine. But uh, rarely do we have meetings that we're not uh, super intentional with what we're trying to get accomplished. And I think that tempo and that clarity uh, gives you some sense of relief that uh, you're, you're spending your time in the right spaces. Yeah, for sure. We, um, you know, at Renzo, we talk a lot about mm -hmm. where the bus is going. And there are so many companies that we do work with that will say, oh, no, my people know where the bus is going. And the analogy we give is saying, hey, listen, this bus is going to San Diego. And when we get to San Diego, we're going to have a great time. It's a fun city, 300 days of sun a year. We're all going to love it. But at some level, at some point throughout the year, someone on the bus is thinking, hey, we're going to San Francisco or we're going to San Antonio. And so one of the things we have to do is make sure, does everyone know exactly where the bus is going? And then secondly, are we all aligned that that's where the bus is going? And if we don't have that, the other analogy we give is, imagine your car breaks down in the interstate and there's four of you in the car and you all jump out and you go, all right, well, let's push the car where we need to go. And each person goes on all four sides, you know, one on each side of the car. The car goes nowhere. And in many organizations, many departments, uh, many teams, 
the, the team members are all pushing on opposite sides of the vehicle instead of getting behind it and pushing it where we need to go. So that whole idea of clarity and alignment is super important for you as a takeaway in this breakout session. I encourage you to ask your team, does everyone know exactly where we're going? Do you know the end point? And are we all aligned that this is the end point we need to go to? If you don't have clarity and you don't have alignment, what you will more than likely have are a number of things like silos, people working in silos. Uh, you'll have confusion. I thought we were doing this. No, we're doing this. Who told you that? How come I didn't know this? That leads to frustration. Frustration sometimes leads to chaos. And then chaos often leads to triangulation where we're circumventing just having a very uh, direct, specific conversation, but we're having it around the actual point that we're trying to, uh, to determine clarity on. So clarity and alignment, we cannot talk about how important that is. And what it boils down to ultimately are what are your daily actions? Um, are you being very specific with your team about what needs to be done? And the last thing I wanna touch on on this topic is in the midst of the current environment that we're in, where more and more people are working from home and teams are remote, the clarity gets ever cloudy every single day. So we might tell someone on Monday, hey, this is where we're headed this week. But between Monday and Friday, their kids are all of a sudden home from school because of uh, you know quarantine issues. Um, maybe there's something going on in the family. Maybe we've had to reinvent what's going to happen for Thanksgiving or Christmas holiday season. So people get really cloudy about where we're headed. And so at Renzo, we talk about three different lenses. And the lens image that you see here is really indicative of what we talk about. There is the, the floodlight lens. The floodlight says, I have this great big grand scheme of where we're headed. And many of you probably got the, the floodlight vision of where your company or your department was headed in January. And then in February and March, it got really cloudy about where the company was going. And when you get really cloudy to, to seek clarity, what we have to do is move from a floodlight to a spotlight. And a spotlight says, okay, the floodlight said this is what's important, but the spotlight says these three things are what we're focused on. And even in the midst of April, May, June, July, August, September, October, or current, current status, we have to get even more focused and have a laser beam focus on what's important. So what you see on the image is this very narrow focus, what we would call a laser focus or maybe a spotlight focus. Over the next 45 to 60 days, as a leader, one of the things that you can do for your team is say, we have no idea what next year is going to look like, but we do know what the next 45 to 60 days are gonna look like. So instead of having this massive floodlight view on what next year is gonna be, let's just zero in on what the next 45 to 60 days are and get some clarity and get some alignment and then help share that with our team. Joel, no, anything to add I'm on good. that? Cool. So the way we do that, the way that we uh, show up for our team and prepare them for this spotlight and laser beam thinking is we have to have intense preparation and be very purposeful about our days. And Joel talked about this a little bit. He said he doesn't go to a meeting until he knows what the purpose of that meeting is. Um, my, my partner, Chad Carden, will often say that he or she who sets the agenda controls the meeting. And I'm just curious, in the chat box, do me a favor and leave a comment if you've ever been to a meeting where it was very clear once you got in there that there was no agenda. How does it make you feel when you get to a meeting and there, you, it's clear that there is no agenda? How does, how does it make you feel? And Joel, you'll have to tell me what's being said in the chat because I, I don't have... Amanda uh, says annoyed, Sarah, yes, out. and it's frustrating. Pam, ugh, frustrated for sure. So this is what, what, what happens often in organization is we call these meetings, no one is prepared for it. There really is no purpose for it. We know we're meeting on this topic, but as Joel said, we have no idea what the outcome is supposed to be. And so when you figure out as a leader that one of your goals is to be as prepared as humanly possible for these meetings. Um, the meetings, A, will go off without a hitch. Remember, he or she who sets the agenda controls the meeting 
If you remember one thing out of this session, remember that. And this is true whether you're in a sales capacity, uh, you're leading a team, you're in a project management role, whatever it may be, if you have set the agenda, in the end, you will ultimately control that part of the meeting. Um, and so, Joel, I'm curious, how have you guys done it using the traction model? Well, what does that look it's, like it's funny. Uh, I see a couple more comments uh, around that uh, waste of time. I love Stacy's comment. She in, she empowers her team that if there's no agenda associated with the invite, to decline the invitation. I mean, that's 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 great support Ooh, in this good. idea of let's be as as clear as we possibly can. Uh, so yeah, back to the EOS model. It is just that. Um, we have regular meetings and, and, and honestly, it's, it's more about, Hey, we know that meeting is coming. We know what the agenda is. We literally go a line item by line item by line item in the agenda, but we know we have a time limit. So we have to keep things moving. Uh, and if there's side banter, the whole idea is we go, stop guys. We've got a lot of work to do. Let's keep on task until we can finish that. Um, and the nice part about that is we, we know it's there and there's only one way a leader, there's two ways a leader can miss a meeting. It's awesome. Number one is if you're sick or if you're on vacation. So no matter, I've had, I've been on meetings and they're an hour and a half long, week long leadership meetings. And I could be in my truck driving to Minneapolis and I, I still participate. So um, it's, it's a valuable enough use of our time that we, we have that level of commitment. Yeah, that's awesome. What I love about that is the intentionality of the meeting itself. I mean, if we're going to have this, mm -hmm there's gotta be an outcome, right? This goes to, to the purpose of the meeting, but also the individual purpose. The image that we selected here um, of a hand holding a compass and two routes, we can go to the left or to the right, is there are people on your team that do things differently. One of the things that we share in the forum and Renzo that we teach on a regular basis is that, that, that one out of every four people, I'm sorry, three out of every four people communicate differently than you do. They communicate differently, they make decisions differently, they work in groups differently, they work individually differently, uh, they take risks differently. And so what we have to do is we have to understand each of the individual on our team, what their purpose is, how do they operate, how do they function. And if we've prepared for the meetings well enough, we know that when we assign intentional work to our teammates, we've assigned something to them that we would uh, at Renzo call energy. And when we're assigning projects to people, we always talk about there's, there's one of two categories that these tasks fall into. One is energy and one is stuff. And the difference between energy and stuff is energy tasks give you energy. They're things that you're naturally good at. It doesn't take a lot of work for you to do well. Um, you would naturally volunteer yourself to do that kind of work. And then there's stuff. And stuff are the energy draining tasks things that you dread doing, you put off to the very end of the day. And even then, sometimes you don't get it done. And then it's facing you like a giant hairy toad the next morning on your desk, you have to eat, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we understand the purpose that people bring to the office every single day or bring to their work every day. And the only way we can get there is by having one-on-one, -on -one, very intentional one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations with our teams about what is energy and what is stuff for you? What do you love to do? What do you not love to do? How can we make sure that you're as intentional as possible in the work that you're doing and that every day when you show up, you're showing up prepared and you're show up, showing up purposeful about the work that you're doing? Um, it leads to a more engaged workforce. And Joel, I, I know that you've worked with Gallup or I think there's some Gallup folks uh, potentially out there and Gallup's got some interesting research on this on the topic of engagement. Yeah, I don't have uh, the exact numbers, but I know that we have uh, talked about the fact that there's a, a minimum of 70% of the workforce is actively disengaged in their business. Uh, and then when it comes to things like the forum and, and the billions of dollars that is spent every year on, on training and leadership development, uh, it's amazing that there's still that little of engagement in the workforce. And so um, we believe the forum and, and working with Renzo is a, is a great opportunity for us to, to be more engaged, improve alignment within our teams, and it's worked really well. So, This last year, I think 2019 was, uh, was the most recent year that it's been released, the Gallup. Uh, it's the Global Engagement Study. 
uh, of the workforce globally. When you look at the numbers, I think this last oh, year, wow. it was 85% of the workforce globally is disengaged or actively disengaged. And when, when you look at that and you go, wow, only 15%, 15%, it's like one in seven people are actually engaged in their work. Some of the, the companies that we've done work with will say, our people are really happy. We have a really happy workforce. They're super, super fulfilled. Being happy and fulfilled is different than being engaged. And this is a big difference in why the forum is so important. What we talk about in the forum about creating clarity and alignment is super important because once people understand where we're going, we're all on the same bus going the same direction and we're all moving forward together, that's one step in creating an engaged workforce. The second step is creating purpose in your employees, uh, in your team, so that every day they show up and they're showing up with, with great purpose. The bottom line that they found out in this Gallup study was that of the 15% of companies who have an engaged workforce, they were 21% more profitable when you dig into the metadata that they'd studied. So there is a direct correlation between engagement and profitability within organizations and a big difference between happy employees and engaged employees. You could have a pinball machine or a foosball table or ping pong or bring in lunches every Friday and your people will be really happy about the fact that you have all that. But at the core of it, they're probably still disengaged about what work needs to be done, in what order, what's most important, who's gonna do it, and so on. So one of the things that's done at the forum is every single month when we come in, uh, we have leaders bring a challenge that they're having to the table. And I mentioned at the very beginning of this breakout session, but the power of a mastermind group, where you have a, a small group of people that are dissecting each person's challenge, giving suggestions, talking about their personal experience. What happens is we create this very shared experience out of it. Um, it's a chance to co-create growth with peers in the industry, people that are maybe encountering the exact same problems that you are, or maybe they've, they have encountered those, but they've figured out a way to solve them. And so what you do is you create solutions in the moment that you can take back and apply in real life, in person, at your organization, and then bring those successes back to the next month. Um, the forum's an amazing opportunity. Uh, Joel, I'm gonna bring up a slide just to talk about that a little bit because I know uh, the forum beginning in Omaha is coming up right. and there's still some some seats left. Yeah, I appreciate that. No, it's, it's, it's been a, a great opportunity for not only myself, but my organization to engage with the industry. Uh, we have a lot of customers, as, as I mentioned, 500 participants from 100 plus organizations, that tells me that uh, there's confidence and success in the delivery of the forum because they keep sending us people. So I have some organizations over the years that I've had 40 or 50 senior leaders participate in the forum with us. And so we're very proud of it. Uh, it's, it's, it's fun to participate in. Uh, the game, it, the aha and the challenge resolutions is simply this. I mean, there are very, very bright people in the room and it's not like we're coming up with innovative uh, solutions, but these solutions and ideas are coming from a different perspective. And it's just that different perspective that can make a drastic difference and allow them to move the needle forward with a particular challenge. So um, there's a lot of value with that. There's been a lot of, uh, a lot of laughs, a lot of commiseration, and have been a few tears. Um, and so it's, it's been an exciting journey. I'm looking forward to joining uh, the Nebraska team in January. Again, I mentioned that these are uh, year-long commitments. These are half-day sessions. We begin at 1, end at 4.30. Uh, we usually end in an optional happy hour so we can still build a little community. Um, I would predict in the first quarter that we'll be virtual. We'll continue to do it virtually. And so we modify that based upon, uh, modify our sessions based upon the time we can do it. I know we're all getting Zoomed out, but we're trying to be as um, uh, thoughtful with the use of the time. So we're excited about it. I'll be in the booth uh, from 3 to 3.30 today if anybody would like to come and visit with us more about that um, and uh, look forward to it. So thank you for your time. It's awesome. You talk about it, Joel, like it's leadership it can therapy. Be. It can be. You know, like <laughs> these senior leaders come in and they, 
they get to expose their their vulnerabilities and and uh, challenges. The group uh, kind of helps you through that. And Joel alluded to it, but but we always talk about um, it's tough to read the label when you're on the inside of the jar. And quite often, when you get to come to a group of people who who have no uh, context around the situation that you're in, but they can they can see what's happening. Uh, they can talk, you can talk to them about what's happening in your organization and they can say, well, this is what it sounds like. What they're doing is they're reading the label on the outside of the jar. And sometimes when we're stuck on the inside of the jar, we can't really see why something's working or not working. Mm-hmm. It just is what it is. And one of the lessons that we teach uh, through Renzo and at the forum is that your business is perfectly engineered for the results that it's currently getting. And again, this is a really important note to make your business, and you could insert your life, your family, whatever, your business is perfectly engineered to get the results it's currently getting. That means your team is perfectly engineered to get the results it's currently getting. Uh, Your marriage is perfectly engineered to get the results it's getting. We talk about this in great depth and detail because to change, to alter what's happening, we have to change the way we look at things. And I believe it was Wayne Dyer who quoted, who was quoted as saying that, but he said, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And so through the forum, what you'll be challenged to do is bring something that's going on within the the walls of your company and then look at it from different angles. Change the way you look at things and the things you look at will change. As an example, one of the skills that we'll layer in throughout the forum is how to have a difficult conversation effectively. And a difficult conversation doesn't have to be difficult, like cantankerous or con- uh, you know confrontational. It could be someone's bringing a problem to you. And what you need to do is de-escalate the situation, listen to them well. We teach you a very strategic formula that allows you to de-escalate any situation, have a difficult conversation effectively, where the other person feels heard, they feel understood, and you come to a mutually agreed upon resolution that also has accountability. Those are the kinds of skills that you'll walk away with. And what we found is that many leaders come to the table having been promoted into the role that they're in, but they've been promoted because they were really good as a project manager, or they were really good as a developer or a coder. What they lack maybe is the ability to understand why Jim in the uh, cubicle across from me um, reacts the way he does when under stress. Or maybe it's the fact that I don't really understand why This person over here, uh, when they walk in, the very first thing, they shut their door and they go right to work. They don't say hi to anyone. And so people think maybe they're rude. Well, that's not the case. That's just a different social style. We'll teach all of that. So what we're talking about are really foundational leadership skills. Uh, We're going to have incredible conversation around uh, circumstantial happenings within your organization. And more importantly, we're going to come to resolution on some of those that allow you to go right back to the company and put them into practice the very next day. Our goal is to build better leaders. And we have a theory that organizations improve when their people improve. So our goal is to improve people one by one, just as Joel said throughout the forum, that ultimately you can go back and build a really great culture within your organization. So Joel mentioned it, uh, but I'm gonna put it up here. You can head to Paragon's Expo booth from 3 to 3.30. I know people will be hanging out there. If you have any questions about the IT Leadership Forum, uh, I'm sure they'd be happy to answer it. And Joel, I think if we have three or four minutes here, we'd be happy to answer any questions that come up in the chat. I will say, uh, for those that don't know, uh, Adam has always uh, been a great friend and mentor of mine for many, many years and has presented to our forum and had been a business consultant for our company. But we have partnered with his organization, and they are going to, uh, we call it the engine that runs the forum. His organization will be presenting and facilitating all of our sessions in both Minnesota and Nebraska. So for that, I'm super excited, Adam. It's, it's an honor to be asked, Joel. And I'll tell you, one of the things that we do at Renzo is we try and get to know businesses from the inside out. Um, many of our clients that we do work with, they'll, they'll ask us at some point, how long have you worked for the company? Um, as in, how long have you been an employee of the company? We try and understand the business at that level because I think only when you can understand it at that level, you can go in and help impact change. 
And so it's, it's, again, it's an honor to be with your forum members for 12 months because month by month, we're going to find out more and more about how their organization operates. And we start building that background story of how it operates so we can help, again, inf- affect change uh, month Absolutely. to month. Absolutely. Looking forward. So to it's going to be a blast. For sure. We have a, have a I don't see any questions. Do you? You don't see chat. Yeah, I, I don't see any questions at this time. Okay. You're not. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Unless I'm not reading it right. Nope, I think we got uh, Jay is the last comment on that. Thank you so much for our, uh, your attendance and participation, everybody. We appreciate it. Um, and again, if you want <laughs> to hang out with Joel and who wouldn't, head over, have, head over to the expo. Great. Thank It'll you, everybody. Have a great afternoon. I'm going to push leave here. I'll catch up with you a little bit later. All right, Adam. Thanks, buddy. Have a good day. Thanks, Joel. Bye-bye.